Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Bangers Only. You can listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and our YouTube channel. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoy this one. Peace. Part two of the weekend. Are you ready? Bro, I am so ready. I've been waiting for this. Yeah. Um, especially after the last time we talked about him, I I was like, oh, man, like, I wish we were doing him again the next week. But, you know, we had to do part two of the Arctic Monkeys. Um, it's fun, though. I like this format, kind of the bouncing from artist to artist who, like, have big discographies, you know? Mm-hmm. It's kind of fun. Yeah, this is, this is pretty solid. Um, but... We have this episode and one more for the weekend, but this one is going to be, this one's going to be a good one. I can yeah, tell. I'm, I'm excited for this one just because I think for me, mostly just the difference between the two products we're going to be looking at. Like it's, it's like, it's night and day in my opinion, um, not in terms of quality, but in terms of just how, what they are, you know? Oh yeah, totally. I mean, I, that's something I totally noticed also. Um, but honestly, man, I, like, let's just hop into it. Let's okay. Get it going. So, Kiss Land. Um, this project for the weekend came out in 2013. Uh, it was technically like his debut major label album because you know Trilogy kind of came out before it was Trilogy. So Kiss Land was a big deal for him. It's it's shorter, which I like. I don't know about you, but I'm a, I'm a big fan of shorter albums. 10 songs is great well um, here's the thing though yeah sure it's 10 songs but there's like a couple <laughs> seven minute it's a couple seven minute boys on there's there there's two seven minutes a six minute and a bunch of five two six minute dude i'm just saying it's such yeah, an experience sure. though like it's it's, it, it's yeah. short in in like song length like or like in the amount of songs but like the songs are super long, but each song, there's so much work put into these songs. Like they just go all over the place. It's crazy. Um, but let's just get right into it. Um, apparently before we get into the song specifically, uh, Abel said that this album, it drew inspiration from Blade Runner. I don't know. If I, you... I, yeah. I realized, I, I know he did that for, I think it was for tears in the rain was hmm. Or that's where he got most of the inspiration for that song. Yeah, uh, he had said something about how just the vibe of this album. Because I don't know if you've watched any of the music videos for the songs on this project, but they're very, very interesting. I mean, he's always had interesting music videos, especially uh, like we, I don't know if we talked about the music video for "The Knowing" last time, or uh, for this one, the music videos for like uh, "Pretty" and stuff like that. Um, but it's it's very cool vibe this this album it's it's really it's strange it's but I love it it's great I personally love this project um yeah I totally I agree with that honestly um like you said it before like this was actually like an experience um I wrote I wrote a lot about pretty much like every song yeah um uh, so like, yeah my back go ahead I was just going to go into professional. Professional? Yeah, for sure. That's the first song. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, what? What are you talking about? Okay, go ahead. My bad. No, it's all good. Um, so, professional is the first song on here. And it, it kind of seems like it's two different tracks in a way. Like, a lot of these songs are very much separate in one song, you know, just because the length is so long. But the first verse seems to be about himself. And the later verses kind of seem to be about someone else. Uh, to me, at least, I think the first verse is about how like fame has changed his life, and um, but he stays in the life even though he's made like enough money to stop, and he feels out of place. But as like as if he doesn't have a community to return to, um, and he's living a life that's not really his own. And he then he relates that I feel like with the next couple of verses to uh, the life of a stripper, and because he's talking about. Uh, he says, there's one line where he's like, you're dancing to the beats of your favorite song. So, I mean, that's how I know it's about a stripper. (laughs) She's making money, you know, but like, it's not a real life. And like, is it worth it for her? Because there's another line where he's like, every touch that you sell is a lie. Um, So I really like that. Just the kind of the, how he starts it with, it's about himself. And then it moves on to about this girl. 
Um, so yeah, thematically, I think that track is really cool. Mm. For me, I think I like the production the most. On yeah, I was going to get there after we talked about like what it was about. Yeah, I mean, you, I'm not going to just reiterate what you said. Like You hit it on the nail, you know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> like, you, you said it perfectly, um, and I, that's exactly the interpretation I got. Um, but, you know, moving on to the production, it was like, there's so much going on, but it all fits so well, and the mix was, like, really tight. Like, nothing Facts, was yeah. muddy, and there's, like, you, if you actually listen, there's so many things going on at once. Oh, yeah. You know, and, like, after hearing, you know, the six minutes of this song, I was like, all right. I'm like, I'm hyped for the rest of this album. Like, I know it gave me high hopes and I actually wasn't let down. So I when I was going back and re-listening to this, because I've listened to this album countless times. But when I was re-listening to it for this week, I was listening to it kind of with a lens like, how what is Adrian going to think of this? You know, mm-hmm. um, because and then the second like professional starts, I'm like, I, I know he's going to notice that production wise this song sets the tone for like the entire album in terms of like its atmosphere and just like how haunting it is and like the delivery of like the random drum beats which i mean every song is so intricate that way and atmospheric i i just love the vibe of this album and this track really starts it off with that Mm. but Um, yeah i mean i thought it was great and honestly like one thing i did notice is like the transitions from each song oh yeah fucking beautiful bro the transitions from uh i think my favorite one was uh, which one was it i think it was oh yeah adaptation to love in the sky yes yes thank you that and then so from love in the sky to belong to the world those mm-hmm. three tracks just bled together so perfectly i'm honestly like i feel like it's super simple to do that stuff yeah because like i'll be honest like i've never done songs where like let's just like make it all sound the same and yeah. I've never worked on five songs to make it sound like one. I've just always ended a song. That so shit's like, so be, cool, though. Yeah. So, like, get to pull it off, man. Oof. <laughs> yeah. I just want to try one day. Least, yeah. It, like, the... um, Because it's it's not, like... It's really easy to mess that up, I feel like. It's very easy to make it feel like it's really disjointed and just, like, comes out of nowhere. But, like, with adaptation, like, the way the kind of drum beat kicks off near the end of the song it kind of feels like a breakdown of the song and then it just that's the beat they carry through to love in the sky which i think is so cool and and love in the sky the way it ends with like you hear the thunder and the rain um which is kind of like the vibe of the song and then it goes into belong to the world which starts with that um which is i think is really cool production wise Mm -hmm. but Um, let's go back to the town okay um because I, I feel like this album, it, it kind of requires us to talk about every song almost just because of what it is. Um, I don't know okay. if you agree, but <laughs> I feel like we should go through because it's it's also oh, there goes my dog. Um, he he's up. <laughs> uh, the town is one of my favorite tracks on here because I feel like it, it's sad because it's like it's about someone who le- like left him even though he did all he could and even when she was single again he kind of has to figure out how to deal with knowing that like she'd take him back now but he's saying that she can use him and be everything to her when now she's like nothing to him because she left him for somebody else but he'll never really give her the satisfaction of meaning something to him i mean that was kind of convoluted but <laughs> but yeah. I feel like that's kind of what it's like because he's just like I know you depend on me but like you broke my heart or whatever so like and I know the type of girl you are so I'm not gonna like give you the satisfaction of thinking that you mean something to me have you ever noticed I mean I've noticed this especially in later down in another track but like it's always like he's it's always like he's making the girls seem like the enemy in a way he like, does that like, every you single know, like song he, like the thing is like he's not the victim either he's not no, being, yeah. like you know in every all the situations he's more like it's all you like you're the you're the cause of the problems you know and he's like yeah. you know you know who i am and you know if you know you're not really hurting me <laughs> you exactly know, like you got and you, yeah it's just funny 
he does that on like most of his songs i feel like (laughs) and it's more blatant than others in certain situations but um he'll blame you know a girl for being the broken girl who depends on him or whatnot and it's her fault for not being honest with what she needs or whatever um but you know it's it's kind of i think he does that kind of it keeps up the kind of toxic persona of the weekend um and it's probably i mean it's not how he is like all the time as a person but it's it very much works for the theme of his you know stage persona yeah but i always feel like he's telling a story you know what yeah, i'm saying like exactly he's, he's not just like singing like, like to tell a girl he loves her he's, he's like a story in each song in this on on like any of his albums is like a chapter that you have to listen Definitely. to you know and like the town like you were saying he like you were saying he would do anything for this girl and like she just left him you know but like he's not gonna give her that satisfaction that you were talking about yeah i don't know i just think the way he he's able to write like it's like intricate like you gotta like actually kind of look at the lyrics because they're not super like blatant they're not right super f- like straightforward you actually have to analyze it for now but when we get to VD behind the madness, I think that changes. Sure. But yeah, we sure. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, also with that whole thing you were talking about with like the chapters, I think that's spot on for like this and for House of Balloons and Echoes of Silence. But for Thursday, I think it's different because like we were talking about on Thursday, you, it's about one or one girl most of the album or mm-hmm. two girls. Um, but on this project, I think every song is about someone else almost. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think is cool. It's cool that he doesn't always stick to the same kind of way of making his music, you know? Yeah. Um, but um, adaptation. Adaptation yeah. comes next. Yep. Yes, sir. Uh, it's not one of my favorite tracks on here. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but I think it's cool. I, I like how it's kind of about how, like, Abel has adopted the famous lifestyle finally, you know, and he found a girl who. Could have been the one, but, like, he gave her up to continue to live the way that he has been living, you know? Uh, but the transition, I think, is the star of the track. Yeah, that's that was, that's the only notes I took. I didn't really, like, like you said, it wasn't my favorite. It wasn't yours. It wasn't mine, for sure. Um, I think, for me, I like the last, like, what, 10 seconds? <laughs> yeah. Um, into the, I like the transition. That was, like, what did it for me. Yeah. And it's funny, too, because, like, relatively to the rest of the songs on here, it's not that long. But, like, as a standalone song, it's pretty long still at four and four minutes, 45 seconds. Mm-hmm. Um, but, it, I mean, I'm glad that it's not, like, a, one of those six-minute tracks because I really feel like it doesn't need to be, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and same with Love in the Sky, um, which is another – I like this song a lot more than Adaptation. Uh, to me, what I – or how about you tell us what you interpreted this song to be about? Love in the Sky? Yeah. Because I feel like um, I'm kind of just telling every single... No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I think, you're, I think you're doing a solid job. I mean, I didn't really, like, take too many notes on it. Because I think for me, I was more focused on, like, the beat and, like, the pattern. Like, that's what I was focusing on, at least. It was interesting. I just... I like that little, like, psh, that was, yeah. like, for the snare. Or, like, the hi-hat. Like, it was just... For me, I was more, like, intrigued with the beat. Um, and how he was working with it. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I kind of, not that I forgot the lyrics. I'm not saying I forgot them, but that's like, all good. my, my like interpretation, like wasn't like the focus for me, at least on this song. No, that's fine. Yeah. Cause I totally, you know, with the production on that track, it's, it's very interesting and belong to the world the same way. The beat on that track is really, it can be seen as like distracting in a way, but also it's very fitting cause his voice is so soothing and it's not very there's not a whole lot going on there like he's not a rapper so he's not saying a whole bunch of things that conflict with the beat you know what i mean um but for love in the sky what i kind of got from that song is that like uh, he's talking to a girl and that's somebody that he's trying to like basically get to live the way that he lives even though that's kind of like you know that's a hard thing to do but it's almost like in a way, kind of how I interpreted it is like it's the lighter version of initiation from Echoes of Silence. 
Um, because he's like, he wants this girl to live the way that he does because it'd be easier for them to mesh if, you know, they did. But I also feel like he could be talking about or talking to his younger self at times. Cause like he's explaining that with this music stuff, the world will get smaller and like, it's okay to dream big. Um, but then obviously, I mean, the song goes back to talking to the girl at the end cause he was all talking about some stuff near. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly though, I mean, those, those bars went kind of hard. I think at the end they of did. the song. No, they went, went hard. hard. I mean, I'm not going to say them. I'm not going to say them either. <laughs> yeah. But, like, they went pretty hard. And I liked them. Um, I like how... For me, you just flipped a switch, and you were like, whoa. Yeah. You know, who, are we, who are we still talking about here? You I know? know. Exactly. I like how the end of that song kind of was like a... It, was, it almost felt like a freestyle moment, because, like, the beat just got broken down to that guitar. Um, and he was just kind of spitting for a little bit and it felt, it was really cool. It was a cool little break. Mm -hmm. I think there is a song that, I don't know if it's on this album or the, or Madness, where I, I liked the guitar. Like there was like a guitar going on that like was making me nut. Like I was going (laughs) straight up. I was going. Was it, uh, Shameless? Mm, Probably not. Okay. Cause we'll that song is it. most yeah we'll get there. Um, no, it wasn't. It wasn't shameless. I think it was. Um, it was. Was the it one Tears in the Rain? Kanye. It was one produced by Kanye. Which one? Was, oh oh oh! Tell your friends. Yes. Dude. Oh yes. That we'll sample. We'll get to it. Hold on. No, no, that's that's so we'll Kanye. Kanye. Okay, yeah. We'll get to we'll it. Get <laughs> we'll get to it. Woo! I knew exactly what you were talking about. Uh, yeah yeah yeah. All um, right. The long to the world. So the transition, I think, was sick from there to there we talked about like the thunder and the rain from love in the sky that carries into the track um but the weekend himself i think he he said what this song was kind of about he said i mean word for word it's about falling in love with the wrong person uh which i think i mean that's the gist of it like i don't know he's basically like i know this person is wrong for me and i'm wrong for them but like he only likes the idea that this woman can relate to them on some sort of level because she's quote dead inside like him. Um, but yeah, I like that song. This, I yeah. Go ahead. This was one of the more like straightforward songs. I think. Yeah, definitely. Um, he's straight up telling you how he feels and who she is. And he's telling you the issue because I want to be with you, but I can't. And like, I think, I think the, one that hurts the most to like to at least like hear is when he says like I want to embrace you, domesticate you, but you belong to the world. Like the whole embrace part, like that's such a strong word. It is, know? yeah. Because like he could say like oh I want to be with you, but like embrace you is like way different, and like I don't know, it just feels like a stronger word. To, and, like that's what I've noticed too. He uses very strong words that like a lot of people. He uses use. great words, yeah. Yeah, it's just his vocabulary is very expansive and I, I feel like that was a stupid word was, did that work was no it's expansive? no yeah yeah definitely <laughs> okay. and like when I, you said like i want to domesticate you too like that's a really cool line yeah, you know you know domesticate you like fuck <laughs> you know that makes you think it gives you like a weird vibe but you still understand what he's saying and you know uh you know how people say like she belongs to the streets yeah this guy <laughs> this said is- she belonged to the world <laughs> This is bigger. This is bigger than the street. She belonged to the highway. She belonged to everyone. <laughs> Fuck. No, I mean, yeah. This was a straightforward song. Um, yeah. I thought it was cool. I think for me, it was so chaotic because of all those like snares in a row. Yeah. It was like so much, but like, it didn't get boring. Mm-mm. You know, he did a really good job with the chorus. And even, you know, with the, like, bridge and the, you know, the outro, too, like, it just works so well. Definitely. Yeah. And, like, the, I mean, when the hook comes along and the strings come in, the dun, 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 that kind of thing. And then he's, like, yeah, I I just love how the song kind of is composed because it's really, it's, like, it could easily be overwhelming, but it's not. Yeah. I, Um, I mean, I liked it. I think for I like me, I liked it the most because I didn't have to think too hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because it's good to have on an album like this that's so like conceptually dense. 
it's good to have tracks like Belong to the World and Live For that are pretty simple and straightforward thrown in the mix there because it's like your listener I mean maybe they don't understand what's going on but at this point they kind of do because <laughs> they're like oh I, I get that you know what I mean yeah um, um, but yeah I want to move it on to Live For yeah sure so Live For I, it's another very self explanatory track I mean the yeah. lifestyle you know this is the shit that I live for the shit that I die for you know but it's like super like this one's more like defensive this is more like this is why and like you know kind of don't stop me in a way i feel like it is you know um, yeah and, and it's like unlike him just saying like this is what it is he's more or less like this is what i like to do yeah he's like st- you can't judge me like i've made a living for myself doing this and this is what i live for and i'm he- here with yeah. the people i die for and i think drake's verse is perfect on this song in terms of it just being drake Honestly, I thought it started off pretty rough. Like, really, it was cool. Like, you know, he kept like the he kept the court like the hook going, whatever. With like, you know, this is the shit that I live for. This is the shit, or no, this is the shit that I die for, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think he finishes and, like, much stronger fir- than he starts. Fir- yeah, I, I don't know. Like the start, I was like, I can't. I was it was hard to pick up his flow for a bit because it was like each bar was different, you know. I didn't feel like I could like flow with it, but he did finish better. Yeah. Um, I like how it finished. I definitely agree with you on like, it's kind of weird at the beginning. Cause he's just like mm-hmm. carrying on the hook and it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was cool to carry on the hook. Like that's pretty like cool, but like then it got rough after that, but then it got better. And then my mm-hmm. favorite bar is when he says still scream, still scream XO when that Henny pour. And you're like, fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just I love how every time he hops on a track he like always mentions XO. Yeah. You know, like every song that he's been on, I think what was it just like one of them or just two? Yeah, there was been, the one from the one. trilogy. And yeah, then this like one. he even mentions it, you know. But I don't know. I thought it that was like the hardest bar. <laughs> yeah. And I mean also cuz at this point uh, 2013, you know, take care it already come out and they had the track uh uh crew love and i don't know if you've heard that song but yeah that song's great <laughs> and the, the more of the ovo xo type stuff in there yeah um but i mean next up we got uh wanderlust Ooh, wanderlust okay i liked wanderlust because it gave me like this is where i feel like his michael jackson vibes started like elevating you know like i feel like a lot of people tend to compare him to michael jackson definitely Um, and for the for the purpose of this podcast i'm gonna continue to say um oh shoot (laughs) i'm gonna continue to just say mj because it's faster than saying michael jackson you know i'm gonna say mj um he he always has had that vibe to him and the message in this song is actually pretty hard you know like um like he's basically saying like that this girl like she's not sleeping around you know but she's chasing this idea of love that she's been like you know fed down the throat by like media in a way you know and this like whole committedness of love and he's telling her like basically it's not what it is (laughs) yeah that's not how love is and he's saying like you're in love with something bigger than love you you believe in something stronger than trust and like that is i mean for me like that's just like hard in a way like it's a hard bar i think it is and i mean like it's another one of those tracks where it's like the vibe of the song does not really fit the lyrical content mm-hmm. um and yeah i mean that's kind of what i got I, I mean listening to it i mostly just get that the girl in this song is looking for something real and believing for in real love when the weekend is saying it doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But I feel like he was more or less like shooting her down. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like exactly. She was like, Oh, like these are the dreams I have. And he's like, Nope. Good luck. <laughs> you know? yeah. And then he even says like, you know, in love with this idea of love is a shame that they'll believe it will come for us all, you know? And it's just like, mm-hmm. in a way it kind of puts love into perspective of him you know for sure um and how he sees it and how like he's always kind of been that way too 
Yeah. But I mean, that was my take on on Wonderlust. Yeah, uh, for me personally, like, it's just not my vibe. You know, I'm just not a fan of like. I don't know. Like, it, it's a. I love the like the message and all that. Like the lyrics are great, but um, sound wise, it's just not my thing. Really, you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, that's just me. I'm not saying it's a bad song or anything. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, but what's next? Kissland. Um, this song, holy shit. <laughs> This is probably my favorite song on the album. I think the last three songs just it's such a strong finish for this project, but Kissland with that beat switch. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that beat switch just reminded me of the Max. So Ooh, it okay. really did. Bro. I'm not really hyped. <laughs> I like I don't even know where to start with this song. So I mean it's it's so like haunting and mysterious and it's in its vibe and its aura, like with that kind of screeching sample playing throughout the song of someone like screaming. <laughs> um, and it has that aggressive snare hitting throughout just, just that. And then the synth and it's just like, it feels like there's so much shit going on in your headphones. But then that beat switch comes along and it's just such a top tier beat switch. Like when that happened, when I first heard it, I was like, what is going on? <laughs> and then the, the that, those drums came in and I'm like, holy shit, he's about to go off. And he does. He just snaps about talking about his crazy ass lifestyle. And that's pretty much it. Like, that's what this song is. It's about the shit he gets to do as a superstar. You know what I mean? Yeah. Are you listening to it right now? Yeah, I am listening to it right now. You yeah. can tell, right? You <laughs> yeah, can I can see tell. Me. I'm like focusing on it for sure. No, I mean, I was just listening for the beach, like to the beat. And I'm just like, you know, it's a goal of mine to make something like that. Bro, that beat switch is, it's God tier, bro. <laughs> I just love like, you know, cause it is a seven and a half minute song, but it doesn't feel like it. It feels no, like I know. it's two separate songs. Exactly. Yeah. Cause I mean, in a way it really is, but like it just, I wasn't bothered by the seven and a half minutes. Bro, that like, I, People got to go listen to that song. Like, it's so hard. <laughs> it's so gritty. It's so... If you like The weekend's kind of darker material, like, this track has all of that. And it's long, and it's punctual, and it's just mysterious, and I like it a lot. I, was, I mean, I used to listen to the song to get hyped on the bus, <laughs> going to cross-country meets, you feel me? <laughs> um, but yeah, Kissland... Title track goes hard. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, your your title track has to go hard. Yeah, it like, does. You know, I've 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 heard countless songs where I'm like, this is the title track. Like, what? Yeah, I know. Like, I feel like the title track it it just has to go hard, like you said. Mm, like that one, it needs to be the one you remember the most. For sure. You know, and that's needs to song, be the one where you're. It needs to be the one that is so good. You're like, I don't want to keep playing it because I don't want to overplay it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. God damn. <laughs> yeah, like this track, he's really asserting himself. I feel like mm -hmm. he's just like, this ain't something to relate to. That's what he's saying for the last like minute or something of the song. Even if you try, you could never relate to this because I'm really bad at it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> You're still listening to it, aren't you? I am, yeah. I mean, I honestly, I just kept going back to the, the beat change. Because I... I'm it's hard as shit. I'm obsessing. I just, I'm, you know, I'm taking notes. Gonna, you know, do try and recreate something cool like that one day. Someday. We, Someday. we gonna do it. We gonna do it. But yeah, um, and then... Yeah, moving on from that track. It's hard to move on from that track. But... <laughs> uh, pretty... Um, Pretty is a really interesting song as well, uh, but it's more, I don't know, it's its not, definitely not the same as Kissland by any means, but it's, uh, I don't know if you've seen the music video for it, but the music video kind of explains the track, like, really well, um, but for those who haven't, uh, what I get from it is that I think basically the woman in this track cheats on him at some point, and he's pretty pissed, because it's, like, been a long time since he's seen her or whatever, and, like, he basically feels 
<laughs> like he just wants to humili- humiliate her and lower her self esteem and confidence to the point where like she won't feel pretty anymore. Um, that's what I get from it. Cause like, and it's a, another one of those songs where it's like the lyrical content is way darker than like how it sounds. And even like in the chorus, it doesn't even sound like that's what he's really talking about, but he's like, you will never feel this pretty. You'll never feel so beautiful when I make it there, you know, cause he's pissed, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the verses, I mean, he's talking about like, why he's pissed and then the hook comes along and it's more well, convoluted. Yeah, she, he said it right now. He said, you fucked another man. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'd be pissed too. And exactly. he even says, like, he says I ha- he's been exactly like 365 days, which is a year since I've seen your face, you know? And she just, he just found out that she cheated on him. And it's like, like, why did I come back? Like the first line is like, it was pointless. Somebody told me it was pointless for me to come back. Yeah, you know? exactly. And I um, think now he's just getting it all off his chest. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was a good one. Dark, I agree. It was dark as heck. I, I sometimes I sit here and I'm like, I wonder if he's really okay. <laughs> and also I'm like, who hurt this guy? A lot of people hurt him. I guess a lot of people hurt him, you know. But I, I like how he just keeps it real too, you know? Yeah. Like if he's ever if he's ever flexing He's never flexing like, you know, he's never flexing the amount of girls he gets like a lot of ra- rappers or singers do. He's never flexing all his money. He more or less is flexing his issues <laughs> and like yeah. and like a lot of his issues in a way kind of stem from the money that he has. You yeah. Know? And, and the ability like, to pull so hard, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, Seriously. like it's a gift and a curse. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, man. I guess I'll never. Understand. And he really. <laughs> same but that's but it's interesting because like he could totally flex that more often but like he's more like yeah it, there's all these girls who don't actually and there's very, there's few times girls want the real things but like you know they don't they're not faithful to him because he's just another dude with money yeah. um but Tears in the Rain uh, rounds the album out, and this is another one of my favorites. I don't know if it's my favorite. It's between this and Kiss Land for me, but this track is its so simple, but it's so amazing. Like, emotionally for him, like, vocally, this performance stands out so much for me because he's, he's so raw and, like, emotional in his delivery. It's just so beautiful. Like... He's talking about how no girls will compare to a previous woman and how it's hard for him to find anyone to really fill that void for him. Um, And the track is just so, like, it carries out that vibe of the interesting drum beats and all that. But, like, there's that beautifully laced guitar that's kind of underneath the track and the hook. Um, And then the way it ends with the slowing down and his extremely delicate falsetto um Mm -hmm. beautiful ending to the track i love this track it's seven and a half minutes long um yeah and it's all of it Mm -hmm. i actually wasn't even mad at the length i thought like you know it's your last track go out with the bang why not and it just brought the project together and then closed it nicely um i did notice this was probably like I did notice overall as the project, like he didn't do a lot of like, like oohs and ahs for like three minutes. Like he did in his mixtapes. Yeah. You know, like I feel like his mixtapes were like easily 40% oohs and ahs. <laughs> easily 40. Yeah. Hey, I'm not mad at it, but like, I'm not mad at it either. I mean, he's, he's got some talent. Cause but, yeah. Um, like at this point, like you're saying, we know he can sing. Mm-hmm. So like, we know what he can do lyrically. I think he's improved with mm-hmm. kiss land yeah um you know because i when in in trilogy the songs were like seven minutes long because he was ooing and awing for like six of them <laughs> you know and now he's filling up seven minutes with actual lyrics and like i don't know i just for me i just i can see that progress i can see yeah him getting better a lot of people who are OG EXO fans will say Kiss Land is his best project. I don't know if I agree with that. 
but I can see why people say it. Because like you're saying, he's basically improved on all fronts. Because vocally, I mean, he's been elite. And lyrically, he's improved. Um, this album has a very cohesive beat layout in terms of like how each track transitions. And they all sound like they would be on an album together, you know, which I think is... It sounds really like simple, but that's crucial for albums, and a lot of albums don't have that, you know. Um, and I, like for me, there's just like something nostalgic for like House of Balloons per se, so that's why it's my favorite. Um, but Kissland is is quite the experience, and I think those who haven't listened to it gotta go check it out because the the tracks are so long, and we obviously couldn't hit on everything, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, any other final thoughts on Kissland? No, I think we hit everything, because, I mean, we talked about every single song on here in depth. Mm. Um, for sure. I mean, for me, I just think as a debut album, you know, pretty solid. Oh, yeah. Like, um, you'd set a strong foundation for him. Um, and you could tell, like, he was still himself, but also trying to... St- change style like trying to expand and grow as an artist um but he still kind of stayed true to himself yeah um he stayed true to what made him the weekend exactly and that's why i like this project because like it still sounds like the weekend and that's why i feel like we can kind of move on to beauty behind the madness now because it for me at least i feel like it continues the conversation of the weekend staying true to himself or not staying true to himself not saying that he didn't on beauty behind the madness but it's a major departure from anything else we have talked about like major it's so different (laughs) like it's like i said earlier it's night and day um it's mainstream and it's it's way more mainstream in its material um not necessarily in its sound because like it's hard to really classify the genre again because he's always been hard to classify genre wise but um, the songs are way less complex thematically. Um, they don't deal with as much grittiness in the last few project. Like this album, what I'm saying is like, it's it's for the radio mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt with mm, a, a decent handful of these songs. Um, but... I mean, yeah, let's just let's just kick it off with real life. Why not? Let's just dive in. Okay. Uh, so first, okay, yeah. So <laughs> real life, I actually really like the, that song. I think it's a really cool opener. Um, because like like Kissland, he's always tried to you know establish the sound of the album with the first track, and this track along with the closer, uh, it sounds like you know like a movie. Like, the song is, like, introducing the character of The weekend, you know? Um, and he's talking about, like, the come-up, you know? And, like, how he's living now versus how he was living. Um, that's what I got from that song. What about you? Yeah. Um, I think I think you got it spot on. Like, you know, it's just if he's setting up the character right now. Like, what he's always do- doing with most yeah. of his projects. Um the line that I like the most in this song, though, was like the whole "Mama called me destructive," said it ruined me. Said one it day. ruined me one day. And it's like, imagine, like, oh, dude, yeah. hearing that from your own mother. Like, it's different when your mom's like, it's "I'm tough. mad" or "I'm pissed off with you," but like, they say, "I'm disappointed," or they're saying you're destructive to yourself. Like, hearing those words from your mom hits different than a friend or, you know, someone random. It's just like your mom; like, she gave birth to you. She knows you. You know. Bro, yeah, that's, <laughs> it's hard to hear something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, going on from here, I don't think we need to talk about every song because they're so self-explanatory sometimes. Like, um, like often, for instance, like, come on, we don't need to talk about like what that song's about. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Um, but Losers, I think, is a really cool track um, because it's, it's kind of like about, it's more complex like lyrically than some of the other tracks on here it's about like learning from your experiences rather than the traditional route you know both the weekend and labyrinth here i feel like are 
they've been through tough times and those tough times have taught them what they need to know versus like a school um only losers go to school as they say Um, because the weekend dropped out of high school um but they owe their success to themselves you know Mm -hmm. Um, and i love how the track kind of ends with that emotional piano and then it goes back into the hook um i like the labyrinth feature too i think it's cool yeah i thought labyrinth did a really good job i thought it was like it was like a feature i would be like excited to hear um but yeah. going on to like the style of this track and how it was like put together like it was definitely like uh they call i think they call them like taste breakers or whatever like it just kind of was different from what i knew from the weekend it seemed a little bit more like happy you know exactly very pop of like what I mean, that's literally what this whole project kind of came out to be. Yeah, it's like pop R&B because it still has, you know, your trap influence in there. Um, it's not quite like, it's, it's just hard to describe the sound because it has very pop um, yeah. sounds. And like at this point, I mean, the lead singles for this thing were The Hills often and Can't Feel My Face. I mean, come on. Like yeah. <laughs> uh, The Hills was the first one that he released and i remember when i first heard it i was like i fuck with this like it's hard that song goes hard i'm not even gonna deny it but it got overplayed it's the first time i ever heard a weekend song that got overplayed i was like what like overplayed that's this song's on the radio all the time yeah. and i was like the weekend that i haven't heard that before <laughs> um at least in the portland area mm-hmm. um uh but yeah it's we can't I can't really drive home enough how different this project is. Like Can't Feel My Face is my least favorite track on here, but also it's just like it sounds like someone entirely different. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well I, I will say that like Can't Feel My Face, um if you're not a f- if you are a like fan of his mixtapes, you will hate this song. That's me. (laughs) And that is me too. I mean, like, I mean, what? Is it a good song? Sure. Overplayed, 100%. 100%. Like, I'm just not with it, I guess. It's, it just, (sighs) yeah, I'm with you there. (laughs) It's so poppy, bro. And, like, that's not not who he is, you know? And it's also kind of weird to put that right in the middle. And, like, it's it's very spaced out, like, you know. I mean, take an artist like, you know, we listened to Denzel Curry, right? And he had his project Taboo, right? Where everything just kind of got darker. You know, it was progressive and it made sense where every song went. This one just kind of felt put together. Such a good project. This one just kind of felt put together. I know. Like, it it felt... That's another mainstream thing, though. It's it's a collection of radio-friendly songs, which is fine. Like, I'm not, like, dissing him for that, but, like... For me, at least, like, I expect a little bit more from him. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but and there's songs in here I like. Like, I'm not gonna pretend that there's not. I really like the song Shameless. Yeah. Um, I really, I really like As You Are. I like, I like Angel. I like The Hills. You know, I like Often. I like the, the, like these songs the are on my playlist. The Hills, goddamn. Okay. I know. God like damn. we all know. <laughs> if you ever watched a live set from I the wish. weekend and just how how those freaking I haven't seen them live, but I've watched the videos, you know, like how those things sound, it just fills up the arena. You know, I, I've that song would go crazy live. And often too, often some crazy eight oh eights in there as well. Um but yeah, I mean thematically like these songs are very basic. Yeah. I I mean I don't know, man. I mean, I'm not going to say I was let down because he did mention in like, you know, in trilogy, like that whole letter. Remember, he was like, I'm going to have to do things. The Rolling yeah, Stone. Rolling Stone. Like, he basically said, I'm going to have to do things because of my success, you know. And this oh, yeah. Is, and this put yeah, him on the map. Clearly what he was already ahead of time apologizing for. In a way, like he was like, guys, I'm gonna have to push it out because that's what they're gonna kind of make me do. Apologizing to the OGs, yeah. but and like, but the thing, and is, he wants the OGs to understand. Yeah, he, he asked the, the OGs do have to understand. It's like, you know, you were there in the underground days when he had his mixtapes, and like, 
now he's on he's just making a bigger name for himself and like sometimes it's like you just have to do this crap you know yeah i'm sure he, i'm that's sure fine like fun, you know oh yeah i mean he plays these songs every time he goes on tour like i i will say over time i've come to appreciate this project a lot more when it first came out i didn't like it um like i'll say i didn't like it when it first came out i mean i was only 15 but like uh now i i I like it a lot more than i did i think it's i don't think it's like his best project or anything like that or anywhere near that but um it has some great tracks on here and like it's still the weekend you know what i mean yep i mean it is totally still the weekend but also is like kind of not you know, like yeah. coming from the mixtapes, even Kissland, you're like, mm, mm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's kind of like you don't want to you don't want to completely diss it because obviously we still respect him as an artist. And, you know, he's taking these bold moves. I will say I appreciate that can't fit my face is only three and a half minutes. Just have to say, yeah, if that thing was seven <laughs> minutes, I would blow my brains out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he didn't really do that on this album aside from like Angel and like As You Are. And this was there aren't really any. My bad, what were you? And tell your yeah. friends. But this was one of those. This was like I think the project so far where he barely had any oohs and ahs. Barely, and that was one thing I had yeah. noticed heavy. Like he wasted no time. He took every single. Kind of made me sad. I, I mean, did it make me sad? Yeah, but also like in a way I was like, you know what. Like it was 14 songs, I think, you know, on average, a four minute song. I can deal with that, you know? For me, though, like, if you go back and listen to a song like, um, like The Fall, where the last two minutes of that song are basically him just singing his heart out, saying XO over and over again, like, that's so cool to me. I love that stuff. And I kind of miss that from him, you know? Um, I think he. You know, I, I think he... I, I won't say this project's bad, because it's not bad. I think it's a good project. It's just different, I think, is what I'm trying to get at. Mm-hmm. Um, but can, um, can we can we just talk about... You know, tell your friends. Yes, bro. Tell your friends. Um, like you said, Kanye. Uh, the sample's hard. <laughs> um, and this song, like, he's just flexing on this track. Like, I love that. It's just a flex song. He has that one bar where he's like, I'm that dude with the hair. <laughs> you know, like, we all know him as that guy with the hair. And, like, that's who he is. You know, it's a flex song. I love this track. I love the guitars in this track. Funny enough, I've been working on some remixes lately. And this is one of them um, that I've been working on. So uh, I'll get that one to you quickly. Oh, heck yeah, dude. Um, this is news to me, so I'm excited. <laughs> Cause like this, I didn't think you knew the song. That's why I haven't told you. Yeah, I mean, you could have told me I would have listened. <laughs> but now, but now that I heard it, like, dude, I'm hyped. Cause I just I yeah. love the production on this one. This might be like my favorite one. Just be just solely off production, like fucking Kanye killed it. It's fire. You know, I think my favorite part was the filter of the whole beat itself. Like, it sound very yeah. old. You know, it got that retro mm-hmm. color. But on like it. he also like he makes it sound muddy. While like the weekend scene, like the hook and stuff, and then it, like you can hear the filter going like, and it comes back and it sounds very clean, very open, you know, and it just it it puts emphasis on his voice and like what he's actually trying to say and it makes you think, you know, like it's just definitely um, I don't know like you know as a producer like that's like, amazing like that's creative, and I mean maybe not creative but like. It's a simple thing to do, but it makes so much of a difference. And it just, it's artistic, yeah. bro. God damn. No, I agree. And then that solo, I mean, the oh. solo on this track goes on for so long, but it's so fire. Yeah. Like, I feel like the like, solo is like half the song. Like <laughs> oh, for real? I feel like, are there two solos? I don't remember, honestly. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying okay. to listen to it. Anyways. I'm trying to listen for it, but I can't. It's all good. We're going, um, time-wise, we're going pretty long. But yeah, uh, I do want to talk about Shameless because it stands out for me as well because it's a really stripped-down, simple song with the guitar and then him. 
Um, and I like it uh, lyrically too. Like he's talking about um, this girl who like seems to need him in a way and this person depends on him. But it's more of a hookup dynamic. So like he's cool with it even though she's getting attached. And he's basically saying that like it's on her for continuing with it. And she exactly. lives for the pain as yes. he says. She's so this is another one of those her. tracks. It's like it's all your fault. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I I don't know. I I fuck with this song just cuz like I love the beat. I love the the verses. They're so simple, but he's, mm-hmm. he's spitting on there. The lyrics are very <laughs> pop. You know, it doesn't take much yeah. thought, but this is definitely a song like, you know, with its style choice that is a really good step for him. Like this is like acceptable. <laughs> you know, like Yeah. No, it's, I like it's that like song not, a lot. This was more of like a step than a leap, like "Can't Feel My Face." You know, leap like dude, he took like a giant leap. Like my guy was like in the Olympics, like you know, doing the, like the long jump, shit. <laughs> and in the night, I'd say is another one of those tracks. It's just a, a definitely big yeah. leap. <laughs> definitely another right step. Um, but yeah, I I think with Shameless, it's also very much the weekend in terms of like what it's about. And uh, I like that. I like hearing that from him. And then As You Are, I wanted to talk about just because it's it's incredibly different from anything else he's ha- done just because of how nice he's being on the track. <laughs> um, uh, he It's more deep, too, than a lot of these songs because he's, he's talking about, like, two people, him and, like, a girl who love each other. Um, and they accept each other, like, even though they're convinced that, like, they can make it when it's probably not going to work out, you know? And production-wise, it's super simple, but, like, it's very... It's cool. I like that song for him. Mm-hmm. In the Night. I, I know... I know... Here's Here was my thing on it. I think it's honestly, like, his version of Billie Jean. And, yeah. Look, yeah, I can see like, that. Um, I, I was reading in on it, and basically, like, the way he came to write that song was he was recording at some guy's house or like his studio but that studio used to be Marilyn Monroe's house right and hmm. um, basically like you know Marilyn Monroe was like the symbol of sex basically <laughs> in her time and like yeah. you know like that sucked for her and there's this thing and I'm gonna say it because it's kind of important like he talked about um why he not why he wrote it but just like the inspiration you know and he said like i came up with the concept for a song called in the night in her bedroom he's like that was pretty amazing unfortunately i couldn't help but imagine joe dimaggio's sperm everywhere on the floor (laughs) you know but like the thing is it's like this is his version of billy jean and that's why i liked it you know it like yeah, it was a different style for him than we're used to, but honestly, like, he fucking pulled this shit off. I think he did. No, I agree. I think it's a decent song. I I just like it because it's, like, a little homage to MJ. Like, why not? You yeah, know? I agree. No, I, and he does that, I feel like, on every project. Sometimes it works out way better than others. Mm. Um, I'll just say now, spoiler alert, on Starboy, the track... Um, feel it coming with daft punk i feel like his effort to do that on that album there's one of them because that album does it a lot but um and i really do not like that song (laughs) um but (laughs) anyways i i just i agree with you with in the night it's one of the better songs where it's a departure from his original sound um let's see did we talk about earned it no we have not that one is definitely a good step for a new song. I like that song. Like, he just stayed true to his old, like, underground sound in that one, but, like, also trying to advance himself. Yeah. Which I thought was really good. <laughs> and I haven't seen uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, so I don't know how it plays into that movie. Into, but I can only imagine. Yeah, I don't want <laughs> to I don't want to find out. It. I'm okay. Um, <laughs> I, can, I can live without <laughs> finding out, honestly. Who willingly watches Fifty Shades Females. of Grey? But, like, why, though? I don't know. Like, I honestly, like, like, I haven't, like, met, like, a female who's, like, I want to watch that. I don't know. <laughs> have you? Like, I have I not. I watched it. No. So, 
I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm not planning on it, onto, like, watching it ever, really. It just doesn't seem like... Like, I heard that shit's, like, terrible. Yeah. Like, not even that it's, like, gross or whatever. Like, I heard it's just, like, a bad movie. Yeah, I think people were just obsessed with the book and the way they made them feel. And they're like, fuck it, I just gotta see it. And whatever. I don't know, okay. But Anyways. I low-key like Dark Times, bro. Dark Times is a banger. I think Ed Sheeran killed it. I really did. He did, bro. He did. The um, they both kind of have similar verses on here in terms of like how they're structured and that that instance where they kind of hit that high note for each of them. I, I think, think it's, it's so fire. It's the same exact verse, isn't it? No, they're different. They? I, I think, think these so. Are the ones that like are the same. I know there's one song, or was it the one song with Labyrinth where they were the same? N- neither were the same. <laughs> No, these are the ones that were the same. Are they exactly Their the verses same? Their are exactly the same. They just sing them. Are you looking, I'm looking right now? At it right now, like chorus. No way. Actually, hold on. Verse. <laughs> Maybe not. Actually, I'm probably lying. I don't think they're the same. Well, they sing the same chorus. I think. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. But a fun fact about this song. I was like, why would they sing the same? There's definitely verse? a song where they did. I don't know. Um, okay. They, I don't know if you like were able to like figure out like the inspiration for this, but apparently like no, I didn't. Apparently they met at a party, and they just got like fucked up, and they're like, let's just write a song together, and so they did like the next day, and like that's yeah, fire. And, like I guess he did an interview with uh, GQ, and he was like, I wrote a song with Ed Sheeran that was kind of spontaneous. And he was like, um, he's like, we were at the Much Music Awards in Toronto. He's like, I invited him to my house afterwards for a party. He's like, it went on till five in the morning, so obviously we didn't write the song that day. He's like, but you can imagine how that night went, you know. And he's like, and also, <laughs> he said that uh, Ed Sheeran did a freestyle with Waka Flocka Flame, and he's like, in my kitchen, he's like that was pretty dope. No yeah, way, that's what he said in the interview with GQ. No way, yeah, I thought it was fucking dope, bro. <laughs> That's fire, yeah. but yeah, but that song is hard. I fuck with that song, mm-hmm. um, and I like this. It I like makes it sense to me, and this one actually like feels really relatable because like he's saying like in his dark times, only his mom could really love him, and like <laughs> yeah. for me, only my mother could love me. I am me. such a mama's boy. It's ridiculous. I am such a mama's boy, and I don't care. I'm I'm fucking proud of it, you know. But it's like. Me too, bro. I like I've lived with my mom and my sister. I'm a I'm the guy in the house along with my dogs, but like, you know, being a mama's boy, there's, n- there's no shame. Yeah. Um, no shame in that. I love it. Feels good. Um, let's see. <laughs> my mom will love hearing that from yep. us. So, Prisoner. <laughs> Shout out mom. Prisoner. Lana Del Rey. Prisoners? Lana I, Lana Del Rey will talk about someday. She's a very she interesting is. vocalist, but um I like this song. It's not one of my favorites. I like it's it, though. It's not one of my favorites. I feel like she could have, like, been showcased a little bit more, I, in my opinion. I agree. The beat is the beat fire, is though. I like. I liked it so much. Um, but then I also, like, he also said, like, a thing where, um, in, like, an interview where he feels like all of his music, he said, she's, she's the girl in my music. I am the guy in her music. Because they've just been, like, really good friends huh. for a long time. Um, and he's like, I feel like we've always been talking to each other through our music. So, oh, there must be more going on maybe, than we think. Man. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, you do your research for this. Yeah, I didn't do much for being behind the I madness just, like, because I just read like some little things. Like I'll look up the song and like links will pop up and I click. And so that's hmm. what I do. Um, because I like to read the lyrics, you know. So it's yeah, I dope, feel you. I think. I don't know how much of it is like true, but this is what I read. <laughs> you know, I wasn't gonna like dive hey, to the source. Take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, I wasn't gonna like fucking call the person who you know made the article and be like, "Is this a hundred percent true?" <laughs> you know, like I was just like, I read it once and I was yeah. like, "Cool, that's it for me. Good enough." Um, all right. So then, Angel, the last one, and then we'll wrap this up. Um, I like Angel a lot. Um, I think as a closer, like. Again, like what I said with real life, it's it really brings that cinematic feel to it. Um, 
and yeah, I. Yeah, how about you? You take this one. <laughs> Honestly, like I've been talking not a lot. as dark of a song that we've heard. I think. Right. Um, but I think it's a solid like finale. Like it's a solid like. This is how I'm gonna end this album. Um. In a way, I feel like it's. Like. The beauty behind the madness, in a way, you know, like this whole song, this whole project was kind of like, in my, in my opinion, all over the place. Um, but this yeah. song, I think, kind of takes this like pop, you know, style he's trying to take on, but still like still be himself and hidden in his own music. Um, and I think this was like the perfect blend of both of those. Especially with that girl, because apparently that girl, like, she didn't get the actual, like, credit for the feature. But her name is hmm. Matt. I think it's Matty. I want to, I'm going to butcher it. I think it's, like, No Yes or No Noise. I don't know how to say it. It's N O Y E S. So maybe No Yes. <laughs> no Yes. But, no um, Yes. I don't know. But dude, like, her voice, when she comes in, it's, like, really beautiful. Um, it is. It kind of low key paint like picture like paints her as like the angel like singing and shit, you know. Yeah. Um, I think that was a great feature yeah. on there. And she's nice with it, bro, and she compliments Abel's voice so well. Like it's ridiculous. Um. Yeah, I think overall, like the features on this project are very well placed. Like, cause you get the labyrinth one, and then you have a big break, and then you get Ed Sheeran and Lana Del Rey and her. I thought. Um, I don't know, man. I thought this was really good. No, I agree. I like that song a lot definitely up there but i think if i'm gonna give my honest opinion on this project as a whole i think i would give it a honest like s- six out of ten ah seven six point five i'd say seven i think i'm gonna go six point five because um you know what? you're right i'll go seven because he did apologize ahead of time for the crap he was gonna do <laughs> And, he, he, and like yeah it's not bad is the thing i think for us what's hard is that like it's impossible to rank this project among the other ones because of how different it is it's almost like it's two different genres like this and the early stuff um so it's like impossible to compare it i know earlier in the first episode i said house of balloons was a 10 for me i stand true to that um this project um i don't have a whole lot of nostalgia with it so it's kind of like purely off of what it is and um yeah i'm not mad at a seven a strong seven maybe six and a half um yeah relative to the rest of relative. his work yes relative but like um I, that's only what about kiss, kiss land, land? We, you didn't give a i give it like an eight i think i give it an eight i just fire. i really like trilogy i really liked like trilogy as a whole i'll give it like a nine because of like thursday um uh, mm-hmm. House of Balloons, and right House of Balloons, and then Echoes of Silence. Like those are fucking bangers. I think it was perfect. I'm with yeah. you. I take oh yeah, I, that's what also what I wanted to say tonight too. Like I take back what I said in the first one where I thought Thursday was my favorite. Like I realized <laughs> I was probably just like too tired to understand what I was listening to maybe. Um, <laughs> but then I I looked back and I was like honestly like. I only like songs in, you know, in House of Balloons and Echoes. You know, all the other songs in, like, Thursday, I was like, fuck those. You know, I was like, whatever. <laughs> Not fuck them. They're good songs, but I was just like, I don't want to listen to them. No, I agree with you. I think House of Balloons and Echoes of Silence are a whole different Yeah, I'm tier. completely okay with that. But, yeah, man. Um, I think I don't have anything else Bro. to say, you know? I don't either. The discography ranking is gonna be fun oh once we're gosh, all done. <laughs> each um, mixtape, each mixtape yeah, on its own. We'll, we'll do that. Facts, yeah. Um, and with Beauty Behind the Madness again, we both think it's good. I think, but like, it's just really kind of weird to go from Kissland to this because they're entirely different almost. Um, mm-hmm. so next time we're gonna be covering Starboy, My Dear Melancholy, and After Hours. All three. Well, My Dear Melancholy is only seven tracks. Okay. Are they seven tracks in like 20 minutes each? No. No, they're all okay, like oh, damn, under four minutes. Listen, holy shit. Yeah, I'm no. hyped. Yeah. It'll be fun. Uh, Starboy's freaking en- enormous. It's though, fine. So. Be- oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. 
I don't know, it's man. Tough. That, that's going to be a really long episode, I think. We'll talk yeah, about it, though. This Let's one's already freaking long. Let's see what we can do. Yeah. But um, I think well, I think it's going to wrap it up tonight. I think that was solid. I mean, yeah. we, we, I feel like people can understand our excitement a little bit. Yeah. I mean, we both love the weekend. I think that's clear. I just want people to go out and under like listen to everything because I know a lot of weekend fans don't really go back and listen to trilogy or Kiss Land because they're intimidating bodies of work like they're long they're the songs are long it's just unlike Beauty Behind the Madness is just not mainstream you know what I mean um, but yeah people go back and listen to all of that stuff because it's it's incredible stuff for sure I um, mean you know I don't know if we mentioned it last time but like our boy Juan he listened to our first episode and he was like. You know, I he's like I have a new appreciation for the weekend just listening to what you guys had to say, and I, I'm I'm sure he probably went to go listen to a couple of songs we mentioned because that's just the guy he is. But like, you know, listening to us ramble and gush and stuff like, and then you know him going and listening on his own and making his own opinions like he was like I have a new appreciation. You know, that makes me feel good he to hear. Like, I want people to be able to get that out of this. Mm-hmm. Um, cause while as much as it is fun for you and I to talk about this stuff and just geek out over it, I really enjoy sharing my opinion with other people, mm. um, to the point where they can get something out of it too. Um, especially with artists who are like not as well known. Like I feel like with Denzel Curry, like people don't really like know <laughs> a whole lot about him. And I feel like we were able to maybe give people some insight to how complex this guy's music actually is, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, that's how I'm yeah, feeling. As right always, now. you know, just go and check out the music for yourself and then like, you know, shoot us a text. Let's have a discussion. Right. I'm always down. For real. But I think that's going to do it for us today for this episode, for part two of the weekend. It was a long as one. As always, I am Adrian. I'm Clark. And we'll catch you guys next week. Peace. <laughs>